The following is a Shaw Public Affairs presentation. Constituency Report is produced as a public service by members of the BC Legislature through the facilities of Shaw TV. Hello and welcome to Constituency Report. My name is Tracy Palazzari and joining me here in the studio today is Mary McNeil. She is MLA for Vancouver Falls Creek and our Minister of Children here. And uh, obviously this is a new portfolio for you. Is there a steep learning curve when you switch from one to a new one? Oh, there's always a steep learning curve and especially in a ministry such as this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really honoured to be to be involved with children and families mm -hmm. because it's something as a mother and a grandmother I'm very uh, feel very passionate about mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's a ministry that exists because there's challenges uh, challenges uh, for parents mm -hmm. uh, challenges for children and youth so the opportunity that we have is to really work closely with the various programs we offer over 200 programs mm -hmm. and uh, it's really significant the work that's done mm -hmm. and I would imagine it would be especially significant and rewarding given that it really fits in to that agenda of families first that Premier Christy Clark has put forward. That's very true. You know, we have a new Premier and a new agenda, and it's very, very much families first focus. So mm -hmm. children and families, uh, children and youth, uh, really are part of that agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that, as I said, not only personally do I feel passionate about, the other ministers do as well. And uh, our Premier, it's very much on her uh, top of mind. Mm -hmm. What are some of those challenges that families might be facing, some of the areas that you might be prioritizing? Well, you know, there's always things like prevention so that we have strong supports for parents, mm -hmm. but there then gets into the intervention, mm -hmm. uh, spe children with special needs, uh, mental, uh, mental health mm -hmm. uh, for children and youth is a significant par uh, portion of the uh, ministry. So there's there's lots and it varies depending on uh, the regions as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a lot of, as I said, programs all around the province from right prevention right through to uh, significant intervention. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, protecting language and culture, very important. And you were in uh, Parksville recently for an important announcement, or Nanaimo, I should say, uh, regarding an Aboriginal community. There. Yes, we were with uh, Quaymouth Lalem mm -hmm. uh, in Nanaimo. And uh, it was wonderful. We announced 3.7 million to help the uh, designated Aboriginal agencies with some of the one-time costs that they have, uh, be it uh, infrastructure within the office or, mm -hmm. or some staffing uh, training, uh, to enable the the Aboriginal agencies to really um, work together with their communities to mm -hmm. make sure that again children and youth have the right start. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, you know, it's it's helping folks understand their past uh, helps them to get where they want to go in the future. And mm -hmm. and so we really feel strongly about helping these uh, the Aboriginal uh, agencies out. Mm -hmm. And that was a fantastic event, uh, the elders there helping the kids, uh, learning how to make drums. That's it was great. I learned how to make drums. Yeah. Um, uh, not that I'm really <laughs> trained, but it was great to see how they are actually put together and also yeah. language training. Mm -hmm. uh, so we practiced some of the words there as well because it's a lost art. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, you really have to understand the past. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important work that they're doing and it was just great to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, education is of course uh, very significant to families and uh, while you were on that trip, you also paid a visit to something called Munchkinland. <gasps> Tell us about that. Oh, Munchkinland. <laughs> that, that's really special. That's in yeah. Qualicum. Um, and again, and I was uh, happy to be joined by one of my colleagues, Ron Cantillon. <laughs> In the pirate ship. In the pirate ship. There's Ron. Oh, my gosh. We had such a great uh, day. We we saw a lot of the work that they're doing, not only outside uh, the venue. They have some al an alphabet garden, which was mm -hmm. great fun. But you go inside the uh, facility, and there was that great tugboat that you saw Ron <laughs> enjoying. Um, but lots of hands-on things. And I think it was j it's just as good uh, for the adults as it is for the children. Mm -hmm. The children get to play and to to experience things and it gets them out from behind the TV and really gets them into a lot of hands-on playing but it allows the adults to learn from each other as well because mm -hmm. there's a lot of interaction between adults. I, I, it's really a significant program. Mm -hmm. Lots of different areas for the kids to yeah. explore like, um, um, what do you call it? Um, um, 
Interactive. <laughs> Interactive. That's yes. What yes. For. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff for them to do there. And uh, a really fun example of uh, how important fun and play are in that early learning experience. It's huge, yeah. and it's something that the government has been working on over the last decade with our Strong Start centers mm -hmm. and and various others. I mean, it, it it really shows a lot of the learning happens in those early years, zero to six, and yeah. what can we do to make sure that these kids get the opportunities to get out there and interact not only with each other but with mm. some uh, hands-on, uh, be it a computer. There are, were computers that were actually on site but also in uh, play areas where they can learn to pick up a hammer and do various mm. things. All really important. Yeah, yeah, very fun for them. Yeah. Uh, staying with education, we heard about some uh, seismic upgrades and classroom extensions to a couple of schools in your riding, Elsie Roy and Falls Creek Elementary. Tell us a bit about that. That's true. Elsie uh, Roy is the one I'm uh, most familiar with because it's right next door to where I live. Mm. So I pass it three or four times a day. Yeah. Uh, and it's great, the playground and all the work there. But they are adding an ad additional four classrooms there. Mm -hmm and then two at the uh, at False Creek Elementary. These are uh, additions to help with the er, um, full day kindergarten mm -hmm. classes. Right. So again, this is all about teaching kids earlier and earlier so that they have a strong start with which to get through and into adulthood. And mm -hmm. it's again, it's really, really important. Yeah. Uh, we're really pleased with the work that's being done uh, mm -hmm. in these classrooms. I th it's around $3.5 million investment. Oh, wow. And full day kindergarten, uh, very well received so far? Full day kindergarten is. I know mm. a lot of parents were hesitant uh, because they, they were nervous about uh, these are five year olds and can my child last a whole day, etc. Yeah. But I'm finding generally as they get into it and really realize uh, the benefits to the children, uh, it's it's going uh, very, very well. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of Elsie Roy, we call it a cool school because they've got a pretty cool initiative going on around uh, the use of iPads. iPads yeah. and, and various other things, smart mm -hmm. boards uh, that a lot of the uh, teachers are using. Again, uh, Elsie Roy, I've had the uh, real pleasure of being able to go in three or four times and really mm -hmm. watching what's happening there. And, and you're right, the, cool, the coolest school even got cooler. <laughs> yeah. um, the, they're very into uh, taking a look at what kind of um, technology are our children going to have to be uh, educated in and, and really um, to help them as they go through their learning years mm -hmm. uh, adapt even quicker. Mm -hmm. to It's a new world and okay. we've got to get our kids used to it and it's mm -hmm. surprising when I look at what my grandkids are doing compared to what my children did. It's, it's huge mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to get even bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's great that we're able to teach kids really right off in the early days. Mm -hmm. I bet yeah. it's a fun challenge for the teachers as well. I bet some of the students might be uh, experts in the tech field. Well, I think, you know, for some of the teachers, they're going to learn from the students, and certainly I learn from my grandkids, and it's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's so much going on in your riding, and uh, one huge project that people uh, see when they pass through uh, quite significantly, the BC Place uh, roof, retractable roof uh, installation. Where's that project at right now? Well, apparently it's, uh, from what I understand, it's uh, on schedule yeah. and ready for completion. I mm -hmm. think it's a BC Lions game, September 30th. Oh, wow. Uh, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been able to watch it and go uh, again on site a couple of times and see the technology that's going into it. Mm -hmm. uh, we took some high school students there to learn about how science can make a difference. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it, it's an incredibly um, state-of-the-art Mm -hmm. uh, renovation that they're doing. It's going to be a whole new building mm -hmm. and I think that's important. Uh, there's, it brings in a lot of ac uh, uh, economic development into our um, constituency so mm -hmm. it's good from that point of view. It's going to add special event days and it's going to really make that stadium much more uh, well-rounded um, mm -hmm. so that we can use it to rain or shine and, and yeah. it's, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. It's such an impressive yeah. sight uh, when you come into the city seeing uh, the way it's being constructed. And, yeah. uh, yeah, and it's, it's going to get even better because it's yeah. going to be more interactive. They'll have the ability to shine colors. Mm -hmm. um, so when a, when the BC Lions are playing, we're going to see lots of orange. Oh, uh, nice. When the White Caps are playing, we'll see lots of blue, when, uh, yeah. blue and white. So it's really um, it's going to be a lot more inviting mm -hmm. in the whole neighborhood. 
Okay. And the Creekside Park extension, uh, where's that at? Well, that's something that I personally uh, would love to see happen. I know mm -hmm. a lot of the constituents have been waiting a long time for that. Uh, it's been on the books for a while. Mm -hmm. um, the province has committed to and will be doing soil remediation as soon as it's required. Okay. Uh, and I think it, it's something I'd, I'd love to see, certainly before my ten years up. I'd, <laughs> I really want to see it happen. Mm -hmm. um, it'll add uh, huge... Uh, amenity to the whole constituency, mm -hmm. um, right from Science World right along to where GM Place and BC Place are situated. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, sorry, it, Rogers Arena. Mm, that's and right. I have to be <laughs> so careful on that one. That. I know, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I hear uh, work is also uh, underway uh, still in David Lamb Park. BC Hydro transmission lines are being upgraded there. Yes, uh, again, there has, uh, you know, we have to keep up with the infrastructure and the mm -hmm. infrastructure, uh, we've grown a lot in the last uh, decades and so BC Hydro is doing a, a tremendous project. They're on schedule. We hope to, uh, apparently it's supposed to be finished for Jazz uh, Festival at the beginning Ooh. of July, which is great. Yep. Uh, they're working a lot of hours in order to make that happen. Um, it's great, to, you know, we lost the park for a bit during the Olympics, which was a, a fabulous experience, mm -hmm. um, and, but we've got the majority of it back and hopefully we'll have it all back by July. Mm -hmm. And Jazz Fest, such a wonderful event. Oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, let's uh, chat a bit about uh, a proposed entertainment and casino uh, facility. Uh, it was rejected by Van Vancouver Council, but uh, where is that at now? I know uh, probably at this stage not too much going on, but... Uh. Well, I think uh, where it's at is the city is working with the province to see what, uh, what would uh, be attractive there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I heard from both sides. Mm -hmm. I heard constituents that really wanted to make it have it happen. They wanted some more activity within the the neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, to make it more of a uh, an inviting area to go to. Yeah. Um, I know my husband and I walk to BC Place uh, and Rogers Arena whenever there's events mm -hmm. uh, because we live in the neighborhood and it's great. But there is that area that is as not as active as it might be. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking forward to seeing uh, a development there. Uh, what it will be is up to what the city and the province. Uh, work together and mm -hmm. and what's comfortable for the constituency. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Let's chat a bit about the Kids Up Front uh, Foundation. I know we have a photo to take a look at here. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, what they do in the recent 19th hole event that you attended. Yes, my husband and I were uh, pleased to be able to go to that event. Uh, kids Up Front is a wonderful organization that really helps kids um, uh, understand more about sports, get out to sporting events, mm -hmm. um, and really participate. And I, it, it's it's just great to, for uh, opportunity for these young kids mm -hmm. that might otherwise never get to a game right. to be able to get to a game. Mm -hmm. um, sport, the power of sport is really incredible. We saw that throughout the Olympics. Absolutely. It, it really is more than just about the activity. It's about the whole team spirit and it's about mm -hmm. um, getting together. And I think uh, it's good for these kids to be able to get out there and, and, uh, and mm -hmm. participate. I think... Um, Actually, we're taking it even further and working with them uh, for the Grand Fondo event, the bike ride oh, up to great. Whistler. My husband's fundraising for kids up front. So oh, wow. we got involved and, yeah. and we love the organization enough that we're going to do some things personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is so great yeah. for kids uh, when they see athletes at that level and the dedication Absolutely. they put in, the sportsmanship. It really builds a lot of life skills for them, doesn't it? Well, it does. Yeah. And there are a lot of great organizations that help, and Kids Up Front is one of those. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, the more kids can realize about uh, what the, the team working together, collaboration mm -hmm. and keeping active, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, now is a good time to take a break here on Constituency Report. We'll be back to check, chat more about uh, the great organizations and events in the Falls Creek area with MLA Mary McNeil right after this.
welcome back to Constituency of Report here on Shaw, joined again by MLA Mary McNeil representing Vancouver Falls Creek and our Minister of Children and Family Development as well. Of course, uh, well, the weather seems to be improving slowly. <laughs> but, oh, uh, slow. Yeah, yeah, slowly, but uh, summer is coming and you're riding in particular. So many fun events and family-oriented things for people to go to. Bart on the Beach is one of them and I know the tents have uh, gone up and it's fast approaching. What makes this a great community event? Oh, God. Well, I, first off, I have the world's greatest uh, constituency. Uh, yeah. Vancouver Falls Creek has so many great things happening uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year, not just in the summer. But Bard on the Beach is one of those that really, um, it's significant, not only visually, because mm -hmm. you see the white tents uh, go up, and uh, as you see on the photo there, but there's uh, such great productions. Mm -hmm. uh, Christopher Gaze and his group just do an amazing job. And and uh, I know I try and get to at least one, if not two, of those uh, mm -hmm. um, a year because they're just so great. Great actors and they just, they're fun. They're fun mm -hmm. productions. And, and it's a, an experience going out yeah. there and being outside in a tent and you see you know, uh, Vancouver beyond, and it's yeah. it's just, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Outdoor theater really has yeah. some unique yeah. feeling about it. And it's something uh, people can bring the kids to. People of all ages enjoy Bard on the Beach. Absolutely, yeah. it's yeah. it really is a, a great event. Mm -hmm. Well, also, uh, speaking of the arts, you recently made a Czech presentation to the Vancouver Art Gallery. What was this in support of? Uh, yes, uh, this was, I think it was artists on, uh, uh, artists, Oh my gosh, remind me, artist <laughs> in the community? Or, anyways, what it is, it brings art uh, artists out into the community mm -hmm. so that people can actually have the opportunity to meet the artists, to see their artwork, and, and uh, to sort of, um, how do you say, uh, sort of unveil the mystery of art. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes you look at a one piece and you're there and it's, there, your connections are emotional, but to mm -hmm. be able to listen to the artist as to what they were feeling at the time and mm -hmm. why they they did what they did, it's it makes art more meaningful, mm -hmm. and that's something the Vancouver Art Gallery tries to do a lot of. Mm -hmm. uh, they do an amazing work. They also have a uh, once a, a month you're able to go to the art gallery and again hands-on play mm -hmm. uh, with your children. Oh, great. Uh, I attended one last month and it was just great. Mm -hmm. uh, so if anyone is ever interested, go on uh, call up my constituents the office and we can give you the dates or just mm -hmm. go online and see yeah uh, they they're trying to do more about bringing art to the community mm -hmm. artists in our midst artists in is? our midst thank you <laughs> so, oh i hate when yeah, i do that I, yeah. I can relate i yeah. was having some trouble speaking yeah. earlier <laughs> but it, it's just about bringing artists uh to the people and, yeah. and allowing uh folks to interact together and mm -hmm. it's just great yeah it just enriches the experience yes. even more uh, we also have photos here from lunar fest 2011 this is a very colorful one involving a lantern aquarium tell us about that this was uh, this oh, was visually stunning mm -hmm. um, it was held in tents at the front of the art gallery mm -hmm. uh, so at night it got more uh, you know visually it, it, it just grand mm -hmm. um, the colors were so vibrant Lunar Fest uh, I was there at it uh, last year mm -hmm. during the Olympics it was part of the uh, cultural Olympiad that was had and it was a lantern festival up uh, Granville oh, Street. Oh, I remember that. And that it's was gorgeous. wonderful. And that was outside. Mm -hmm. uh, this time they chose to make it inside, make it look more like an aquarium. So oh, you nice. saw fish hanging from the, the ceiling and, and yeah. lots of neat things. It was great. Oh, neat. Yeah. neat. Yeah. And was that all children driven or uh, Children, of all ages? Uh, no, artists uh, of all ages. Oh, wow. Again, it was yeah. about how to create these, these visual. Um, extravaganzas. I mean, some mm -hmm. of them were just incredibly detailed yeah. uh, and really neat. Mm -hmm. uh, and then others were just small, the small fish hanging from a ceiling. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it gets your mind going as to what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, Vancouverites do love their arts. They also yes. love staying active. And Bike to Work Week is coming up uh, in short order. What's this initiative all about? Bike to Work Week is a nonprofit society which really tries to host a day and, and bring awareness to the fact that there are other modes of transportation other than your car. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a, it's a great idea. Uh, it, it gets people out uh, and active and, and allows them to say, hey, you know what? There could be another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know one of the things the government wants to do is not only do uh, we want to get people more active, mm -hmm. um, but also we have a transportation 
uh, challenges sometimes, and we also have an environmental challenge. Right. So how do we get people to think about doing things differently? Mm -hmm. um, every transportation infrastructure project that we do, we try and build into it a cycling component, so right from the beginning, so that you're not sort of taking something that exists and, and trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. You're actually starting at the beginning saying, hey, cycling is a, is a, uh, a real, uh, um, alternative mm -hmm. and so how do we make it easier and I think it's a, it's I think it's a wonderful initiative mm -hmm. and I think it's something we need to do give people options mm -hmm. well running was the sport of choice for uh, Terry Fox and his legacy of course oh. continues and a new monument has been unveiled uh, a couple photos here with uh, his mother uh, included uh, in these Betty photos Fox. but uh, yeah tell us about uh, the new monument well I'm, I'm there with Betty Fox and also Dave Podmore uh, chair of Pavco mm -hmm. this was at the unveiling of um, the uh, Copeland's new mm -hmm. um, monument to mm -hmm. Terry Fox. Yeah. Uh, it, it's you can see it in this photo a little more. There's mm -hmm. uh, from a life size uh, up to a twice life size uh, images of Terry Fox. They're bronze. They they are as he was running. If you ever re uh, recall uh, seeing pictures of Terry Fox running mm -hmm. or around the country, you saw that he had a very unique gait, mm -hmm. and there were sort of four different um, visuals that you saw as he was running. And what uh, Doug Copeland's tried to, or has done there, has mm -hmm. captured those four different steps. Right. So it actually moves, but he uh, he's at, uh, going up in height as well. Mm -hmm. It's really wonderful, yeah, and it, it, looks like it you can see him, you mm -hmm. could see the the visuals, and you can s actually experience Terry's running again. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, it's been a long time, yeah, um, 30 years. I, you know, Terry is almost as real today as he was. I mean, I remember when I, uh, 30 years younger, when mm -hmm. I would watch him run across and, and the passion and the, and the emotion we felt. Mm -hmm. But my grandchildren all participate in the Terry Fox run. Right, right. And Terry Fox is, is a name to them as if he was Mm -hmm. right next door mm -hmm. and I think that's really great mm -hmm. and the more that we can do that with the unveiling of a memorial mm -hmm. uh, to him and to be able to have it at such a, a vibrant place at BC Place with the new um, um, the new stadium mm -hmm. practically yeah. it, it's it's great it's yeah. really good it's good for cancer research it's uh, good for uh, uh, young kids to see what it was mm -hmm. that that young man did in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. What were Betty Fox's impressions of the new monument? Well, she'd been involved with Doug Copeland. Uh, mm -hmm. They were very pleased that he was the one that was putting this together. And and uh, so she was aware of it. She and, and her husband, Roly, and, and their mm -hmm. son, uh, their other son, Daryl, mm -hmm. um, Terry's brother, they've been involved in the project. And uh, it, it's, of course, very passionate for them, mm -hmm. um, very meaningful, yeah. and uh, I think they're really, really thrilled. Mm -hmm. Well, the one-year anniversary of the Olympic and Paralympic Games was marked this year. Mm -hmm. Very exciting, and you attended an event uh, marking this occasion. Yes, yeah. actually, we attended two events. This is the uh, February 12th. This is the, the one-year uh, anniversary uh, of the Olympic, start of the Olympic Games, mm -hmm. and then March 12th we did the one year anniversary of the start of the Paralympic right, Games. Yeah. Um, I can't believe it's been a year. I, know. I mean, we were counting <laughs> down seven years, six years, five years to go, and now yeah. all of a sudden it's been a year. Yeah. Um, such great memories, and mm -hmm. it's such great time for uh, certainly Canada and British Columbia, but s especially for the constituency of Vancouver Falls Creek. Mm -hmm. As you know, we had uh, um, Rogers Arena and, and BC Place were both very involved. The Media Center at the new Convention Center, mm -hmm. the Art Gallery had many things. Robson Square, yeah. which is where the BC Pavilion was, and uh, I, I mean, uh, there were so many great memories. I keep hearing mm -hmm. from people, I was there and I saw it up on the side of the Sears building, yeah. the, the game being played, and it was mm -hmm. great, great memories, great, uh, great medal results, as you know, the athletes mm -hmm. were there at the one year uh, anniversary, and it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was good to get everybody together yeah. and seeing O Canada again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it must be wonderful for the athletes to be able to look back at their memories yeah. of that wonderful event. What a fantastic experience to be in Vancouver for an event of that magnitude. Well, yeah, I, you know, I think if for the athletes, for all of us, it's really great. But again, it's about showing the kids mm -hmm. um, their role models and get active, mm -hmm. uh, be active. And, and you know what? 
One, uh, one of the things I do like is when we would get out uh, through the Act Now initiatives and take some of these athletes out now with the new medals that yeah. they've won, and get them to talk to these kids. And uh, our athletes are from all over British Columbia, mm -hmm. uh, from every region in the province. And mm -hmm. to be able to say, hey, we made it as well, you can do it too. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the things you have to do, it's really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also on the sporting front, we're cheering our Vancouver Canucks along during oh, the yes. playoffs as always. And uh, you were involved in an autism awareness event that uh, they put forward. Tell us about that. Yes, the Canucks Autism Network uh, does some really fabulous work. And again, it helps kids uh, with autism uh, do better mm -hmm. and have more fun. Uh, with the diagnosis of autism, it, it really impacts your entire family as mm -hmm. well as that individual. And, and so what the Canucks Autism Network does is really significant. It takes the kids and it, it helps their entire family do different things, go to games right. um, and participate. Uh, the Canucks, as, as we all know, have done incredibly well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hope we'll take it tonight in Nashville. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, they also do great work. I mean, they're a great hockey organization and, and uh, who knows, I don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> exactly. uh, but we, we go to the games and we cheer them on and it's really great for our constituency. I yeah. mean, if we, if we make it to right through, um, this is huge economic uh, spin-off for our constituency. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a bit of that as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you yeah. are a fan. I have seen you rocking your McNeil jersey. <laughs> oh, I have a jersey and it's pretty, I'm, although I wore it the other day and we didn't do so well. So I'm not going to wear it today. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to gain jinx anything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we have tickets and we go mm -hmm. and, and it's, uh, yeah. It, it's great. The power yeah. of sport is just so incredible. It is, yeah, yeah. very inspiring. Yeah. And uh, we just have about a minute or so left, so one thing I want to touch on with you is uh, your uptake of Twitter. Social networking has become a really interesting way to connect with constituents and the public, I would imagine. It, well, it is, yeah. and certainly if you're in a riding like Vancouver Falls Creek, mm -hmm. our average age is 37. Yeah. Um, and if you want to communicate with with uh, young folks, you mm -hmm. communicate where they communicate, and that's on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It's great. I love it personally because yeah. I'm I'm up to speed on folks in in England as well. You yeah. know, we have relatives all over the world that mm -hmm. I'm up to speed with. But I think it's really important you get the message out. Uh, open government, um, and that's a fabulous thing. Okay. So whatever we can do as a government to communicate, yeah. the better. All right. Well, you can find MLA McNeil on Twitter. Check out her website as well: www.marymcneilmla.bc.ca. Thanks so much for watching.